Hi class, it's September 2nd, 2020. I am uh, Professor Adamson. My name's uh, full name's Peter Adamson. I am an audiologist at Montefiore Medical Center. I just wrapped up my day and I want to get the um, uh, video posted online before I have to get to my nighttime uh, job. So I want to, first of all, welcome you all. I know that it's not ideal that we're teaching this class online. Um, most of what you know in audiology is really better experienced in person, but you know, it is what it is as, as somebody once said recently. Um, we're gonna go through the syllabus real quickly. Um, if you do not have a copy of the syllabus, be sure you either print one off from uh, Blackboard. It is up there now. It's under the syllabus heading on the left-hand margin. I think it says syllabus. Um, print that off if you can, or maybe take screenshots. Most questions that you have can be answered via the syllabus. Um, if you do have questions about specific projects, be sure if you can try to read about the project first and then um, ask me any questions that you have, okay? So the um, calendar is the main thing on the syllabus that I would like you guys to focus on. Um, we have this class broken up into five different units here. The first unit is going to be just about audiology and the profession, a little bit of acoustics, and then anatomy and physiology. The second unit is going to be about testing procedures for adults. Um, and it's not really just adults. It's pretty much subjective testing, meaning any test that you can sort of do behaviorally. In other words, I ask somebody to do something, and then they do it. Unit three is as it says on here, audiology testing for pediatrics. But um, you could maybe more broadly think of that as objective tests, tests that don't necessarily need a patient's behavioral response, that is. So unit two being um, adult testing, meaning tests that we do on adults and, and older children who are able to do behavioral testing. In other words, I present a beep, 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 and they respond. Now, as you might guess, developmentally disabled, um, you know, MRDD, adult group, home populations, infants and toddlers, they can't really do that. So we have to do objective tests on that group. So even though this kind of broadly falls under the category of adult testing, pediatric testing for units two and three, you can also sort of think of it as objective testing and subjective testing. Sorry, other way around. Subjective testing and objective testing. Remember, subjective testing, there's a subject, meaning I say something and the person responds. Objective testing, I don't need the person to respond. We do the testing and then the body responds in kind or not, as the case may be. Unit four is all pathologies, ear and hearing pathologies, pathologies of the outer, middle, inner ear, cranial nerve number eight, and the auditory pathway in the brain stem and brain. And then unit five is audiologic rehabilitation. That's gonna be things like hearing aids, cochlear implants, assistive listening devices, and what's called the Baja bone anchored hearing aid. Okay, so that's the breakdown. Each of the weeks goes by, week by week here. We have 15 sort of class sessions. I'm gonna have a video posted each week. I'm gonna try to get them posted more on Saturday because I know that's when this class technically meets. Um, but my schedule, just like all of yours, is a little bit crazy. I, I also have very bad access to desktop computer. I don't actually own a desktop computer at home or have one and don't really have the means to get one right now. I've asked Lehman to provide me with a laptop, but that hasn't happened. So um, most of the work that I need to do for this class is going to be getting done on my phone or here at work at Montefiore, which is where we are right now in my office. Um, so apologies for that, but as I said, it just is what it is. I um, never anticipated having to teach this class um, completely online, hence uh, not having a computer at home. Um, so let's talk uh, quick about some of the projects that are on the syllabus. Um, oh, before we get to that, the textbook for this class is called um, Fundamentals of Audiology for the Speech Language Pathologist. I have a copy of it here. This is the second edition. It's by Wellings and Ux Uxtons, I think is how you say her name. Uxtons. Um, I'll be honest with you, though, class. You do not need to get this textbook in order to be successful in this class. I'm not saying that as a cop-out. I'm just saying it because I, like you, was a student not so long ago. I know how tough things can be in terms of having resources. Um, I would get your hands, though, on some sort of intro to audiology textbook. There are a number of good ones that I could recommend. If you've, uh, Frederick and, uh, Martin 
and John Clark. This is a very good one. Um, this is a very old version, but Jack Katz, Handbook of Clinical Audiology. Basically, any intro to audiology textbook that you can find. Um, I've got one or two other ones up here. Um, you know, I'm just going to move my phone because it's easier to do that. Um, the Auditory System, Musiak and Barron, that Kramer Brown Audiology Science to Practice. Um, pretty much anything that's intro to audiology, the Auditory System, that Musiak and Barron book is really good. Oh, that's the same one that's up there. Um, any of those books I think you would be well served by. Just get something that's fairly recent. I wouldn't get anything that's older than 2010, for example. Even even anything older than 20, maybe 2014, 2015. Mostly because hearing aids and cochlear implants, just like cell phones with digital technology, it's really revolutionized the industry. So any textbooks that are much older than five years old are not going to have the um, most updated information regarding hearing aids and cochlear implants. Okay? Um the textbook itself, the Wellings and Uxton's book, I think rents for about um, $35 or $40 if you just rent it. Um, I think you can buy a used copy for probably about $50. Bucks. I think new, it's about $75 to $100. So budget all that into your budget with the other textbooks that you have. I do think it's important to get a textbook, if only because that way you can read along with the um, subjects as we do them. But if, you know, if you're serious about this wanting to be a career for you, speech, language, pathology, or audiology, that way you will have a textbook within your, um, within your personal library, within your professional library that you can use to refer to. I still look at my textbooks from time to time for different things, especially about acoustic reflexes, um, because you forget some stuff. And you don't always want to rely on Google um, or Wikipedia or any of that stuff online, because as you know... Um, it's only as accurate as the person who put it out there, whereas these textbooks have all been, um, you know, edited by lots of people in the field and professionally published by a, a company that um, that vetted and did all of the information that they needed to. At any rate, <coughs> excuse me, here are the projects for this course. The pathology project, which you guys all have been assigned to, that's in the syllabus, 10%. Audiology in the news. YouTube project, sound level meter project, hearing aid cochlear implant project, sound and fury film reaction paper, hearing test, and then midterm and final. So it is a lot. It's mostly projects. I feel like the, the projects you will be learning um, as you do them more so than probably just sitting and listening to me give lectures, um, recorded lectures. Um, let's go through them in order really quickly. Pathology project is, is the first thing that's up here in the syllabus. I do want to get a draft of it from you by Halloween, by October 31st. Those of you who have last names beginning through um, A through M, you need to have uh, it sent to me so I can get it up onto Blackboard by November 7th. And those of you with last names N through Z um, by the week after, November 14th, Okay. Um, all of your names should be on here somewhere with the pathology. The pathology project, don't make more out of it than it needs to be. If you were actually presenting this in class, the presentation would only be about 10 minutes long, okay? For these presentations that you're not really presenting, but you're going to be making some sort of a PowerPoint or some sort of slideshow, you can really do whatever you want. If you want to be creative with it, that's fine with me too. But if you do a more traditional route, like a PowerPoint, you're going to want to focus on three things. You're going to want to identify what the pathology is. Where is it? Like, what happens? Let's use an example, Meniere's disease. What is Meniere's disease? What part of the auditory system does it impact? What are some other symptoms? Um, what does it classically look like? Define it, basically, okay? After that, you're going to describe what the audiometric findings would be. In other words, what test results expect um, to diagnose Meniere's disease. So you'll want to maybe go into Google and type in Meniere's disease audiogram, Meniere's disease test results. Include information for what testing would need to be done and what the diagnostics would look like in order to indeed diagnose that, that ear and hearing pathology. And then last but not least, you will do um, the treatment for it. What can be done? How do we treat this pathology and how do we rehabilitate it, okay? So for Meniere's disease, you'd want to spend a couple of times talking about the symptoms of dizziness, symptoms of maybe single-sided hearing loss, 
Um, you would want to then for the second section show an audiogram that probably has a unilateral rising to normal uh, uh, hearing loss. And then for diagnostics and rehabilitation, you would want to talk about how an, an ENT doctor would order up different tests, um, possibly a hearing aid, and you would probably talk about um, the follow-ups that were that the, that the doctor would would recommend as well. So, um, please, 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 don't make it longer than it needs to be. I would say you can get your whole pathology project done in a maximum of ten to twelve slides. Some of you will have pathology projects that are a little more than that. Um, I'm thinking maybe specifically auditory neuropathy. Um, auditory processing disorder, it's going to take you maybe more than 10 to 12 slides. But think about it, if this was a presentation, each slide spending about a minute on, you know, if, if you're getting to 15, 20, 25 slides, that's too much. First of all, nobody's going to look through that many. And second of all, you've, you've, uh, you need to narrow it down, focus and get the information a little bit more, um, a little bit more palatable into, into smaller chunks. Okay, so that's the next thing. Um, next thing on the syllabus is the hearing test. Now, in the past, I have always, I can take this off. In the past, I have had people partner up and do hearing tests on each other using a portable audiometer. I don't know how that's going to work this semester. Obviously, we can't do that at Lehman or can't do it at Montefiore due to the pandemic. But I'm investigating some online ones. So stay tuned for that. I may not have information about the hearing test um, for the next few weeks. It's due October 17th, but obviously if I haven't come up with something, a solution for that before October 17th, that date will get pushed back. Next project, audiology in the news. I want you guys to go to a mainstream media news source. I want you to go to something like this, not something like this, okay? When I say mainstream media, that is media that's not about ear and hearing issues, ASHA leader, that's not mainstream media. Think the New York Times, the New York Post, the New York Daily News, um, New York One on TV, you know, NBC News, ABC News. Anything that is mainstream would be, I guess, stuff that has a, a general audience for it, okay? Stuff like the, um, the, this audiology today and the ASHA leader, that's not mainstream media because it's meant for a very small audience, right? It's meant for speech hearing, speech, language, and hearing professionals. Mainstream media should be something that is of general interest um, to most people. The reason why I want you to do that is because it's it's journalism. You're going to see somebody who doesn't know anything about ear and hearing gets assigned to do a story about an audiology issue and then reports on it. So um, as it says, Normally, we would do this as a discussion during class, but because we aren't meeting as a group, you're just going to submit a one to two page paper saying why you chose it, what you thought of the article, what the article basically says, um, just kind of a summary and your reaction to it, okay? The YouTube project. The YouTube project has 17 different audiological tests. You're going to go to YouTube or any sort of video uh, sharing website. And you're going to type in search terms that are related to each of those. I think there's 16 or maybe 15 different videos all together. Um, you're going to watch the video. You're going to put the URL, the, the web address for the video on the paper. And then you're also going to um, tell me two things that you sort of learned from it. Um, two observations. Don't stress out about those observations. Really, I just have you putting those observations down so that I can guarantee or confirm that you did indeed watch the videos, okay? Now, you may have to watch two or three videos before you find a good one, okay? I would rather have you watch and get good information from a 30-second video than, you know, post some sort of 20-minute video that really kind of isn't so good. So I know this is hard for most students to sort of grasp, but um, don't get hung up so much on how long does a video need to be what do my observations need to look like? Just make sure that you did indeed understand the procedure after watching the video and that you comment with two observations after each one, okay? Sound level meter project. Now, this one is a fun one, I think. You're going to download some sort of app on your phone uh, or some internet-enabled device. If you do not have a uh, smartphone or tablet or something like that that allows for you to download apps, 
let me know that. We'll come up with another solution. But I think most people do have those sorts of things these days. Um, you're going to measure in two different places a loud condition and a soft condition, okay? In other words, you are going to pick two different places that you frequent. You know, I know during the pandemic, you're probably not frequenting a lot of places other than your home these days, but it can be your home if you want. This is an example. Students, I didn't have the students' names or permission to post this, so let me just put uh, my finger over the person's name. This is how a student in the past did it. This is a measurement at um, the Flywheel Studio, which must be a, a workout place. I don't know what that is. But she measured at both a quiet and a loud situation. At quiet, it was only 61 decibels. At loud, it was 106 decibels, okay? So she included two screenshots measuring the situation, both quiet and noisy, okay? And then she did it again for another situation. This was at 45th Street and 6th Avenue in Manhattan when it was relatively light on traffic. And then, again, she measured it when there was construction work going on, okay? And that's it. Submit the screenshots. List what the places were. So you're going to have four total pictures, two separate places. Um, make sure that you force sort of the dynam dynamism necessary if need be. So let's say that you're having to measure your kitchen, for example, because you can't get out because of the pandemic. So you would want to measure your kitchen with all appliances off, nobody talking. And then maybe turn on the uh, sink, turn on you know an appliance or two, turn on the TV have your friend or family member that's maybe with you start talking, you know, I don't know, get on your phone, turn on some music, and then measure it then, okay? Make sure that you put down what the quiet and the loud situations were when you do that, okay? Uh, the next project is Sound and Fury. Sound and Fury is an excellent 2000, is a documentary from the year 2000. So it is about 20 years old now. You're going to see that a lot has changed since then. But you're going to watch that documentary. You should be able to find it online to watch for free. I think if, if you just type in Sound and Fury documentary, watch for free, I don't know. I, you guys know more about how to find, watch movies for free online probably than I do. Um, watch it, and then you're going to write a one to two page paper reflecting on your experience watching it, okay? I don't want you to summarize what happened in the movie. I've, I've seen that movie a million times. I know what happens in the movie. I want you to just summarize on what your experiences were watching it. That's not due until kind of the end of the semester though, 12-12. Next project is hearing aid and cochlear implant project, okay? Do you see these six hearing aid companies and these three cochlear implant companies? You are going to go to those companies' websites and just kind of give me a paragraph about each, ex each website's experience. There's some questions there in the, on the syllabus. Um, you know, what do they, what claims do they make? What do they offer in terms of streaming? or connectivity or other assistive listening devices? What are your thoughts? You know, do you feel like one company's um, marketing looks better than another? I don't know, I'm leaving this kind of vague and kind of open because I think you guys being more of a digital generation, you're going to get a lot more experience just kind of messing around on the websites, clicking around. They're gonna have sections both for professionals and for consumers. So you can check out both of those websites. Pay special attention to, um, you know, what claims they are making that you can kind of compare and contrast against each other. Um, we'll, we'll talk more about that later. Um, just make sure that you do go to all six websites and all three cochlear implant websites, six hearing aids and three cochlear implant websites. I've had people do this assignment in the past and just submit like one paragraph and I'm like, well, where's the rest? Just be sure that you go to all of them, okay? So I think that's it in terms of projects. Let me just make sure. I have that all covered. I believe so. Um, the midterm and the final, let's talk about that a little bit. The midterm and the final uh, are going to be done at home, obviously. I will probably give you a limited time frame with which to take it. I'll put the midterm up. In the past, I've given students anywhere from three to 24 hours, depending on the circumstances. I don't think you're going to get as little as three, but you're not going to get as much as 24 hours to take it. I'll probably post the midterm on the Friday before it's listed in the syllabus. 
and like at about five o'clock and then you'll have the next day until about two in the afternoon or so. So you'll probably have about 12 hours to take it or so. Um, the midterm and the final, you obviously can use your textbooks, your notes, these videos, the PowerPoints that are posted online. Um, however, you cannot use each other. All of these projects, especially the final and the midterm are meant to be worked on independently, okay? The projects you can sort of, you know, consult with each other and stuff, but I do expect you to submit work that is your own and not um, uh, other people's, okay? And you might ask how I would know. Believe it or not, students have done this a lot where I've been able to catch people who did indeed kind of cheat and help each other and, you know, text each other. What'd you get for answer? What'd you get for number five? And let's just say I have ways of being able to tell the way students sort of answer a question that I can see similar things that are just too similar um, that sort of end up having, uh, that end up being tells, uh, giveaways. So please, please, please work on those, um, those yourself, especially the midterm and the final. Um, so that's it. I'm going to do another short video later. I just wanted to get this online. I have to get um, the 10 things um, that I want you to learn in this class thing talked about as well as intro to the profession and um, there was one other thing, uh, intro to the profession. Um, I don't know. At any rate, I'll get that posted. This is like my third take doing this video and I can't shoot it again. So thank you so much. We will, I will get another video posted soon and um, email me as always at pcadamson at yahoo.com. Um, don't use my Lehman or my GC email. I think my Graduate Center email is actually tied to that uh, Blackboard account. I, I won't get it because I, I, my Lehman account I still have, but my Graduate Center account, I, I have no idea what that um, email and username is, and I can't get anybody to help me at the Graduate Center to get their reset. So at any rate, always email me at pcadamson.com, pcadamson at yahoo.com. All right, thanks. Bye-bye.